Hey. Welcome. This is Documentation Office Hours. It's the 5th of May, 2023. We're in the Asia section of Office Hours. Topics I've got. Pipeline steps reference damaged. Google Summer of Code. Community feedback suggestions. Transition from Java 11 to Java 17. End of life notifications. And early end of life of CentOS 7. Anything you want to add, Chris? Nope. All right. Okay, so first topic is that we've got an unfortunate, and it seems to have happened within the last two or three days, unfortunate okay. damage to the plugin, the pipeline documentation. So if I look here at the checkout step, this nested choice of objects should have a long list of many things in it, and it's empty. And there okay. are a number of places like that where something that previously had content doesn't anymore. Right now, I'm attempting to run a bisect, trying to find it. Uh, we discovered during Office Hours Europe that uh, it appears to be the pipeline steps doc generator and some recent change to it. And so the bisect is running pipeline steps doc generator through a series of checking different different commits to see if this is the one that collapsed the size of the file or if it's the next one, et cetera. Okay. Any questions there? Mm, not really, but um, do, you have, uh, do you think we should post a link to that, like? To the, post a link to the issue um, or? to the maybe to the issue or to the like the actual repo yeah yeah i'm not i'm not sure what how how are you thinking that would help so what we've got is we've got a a bug report that yeah, says hey there's this link. bug yeah I that. and i i guess i might be able to yeah i'm not sure what we would do so Tell me more about your idea. I should listen rather than talk. Oh, we should talk to Amanda Popular and we share a link here. Yes, so, so like, um, maybe like anyone interested can try to help. If they want to. Ah, ah, okay. Well, so here yeah. I can I can certainly post a link to the issue report. So the issue's right here. Yeah. And and so issue. And uh, it's got my notes in it of things that things that we've discovered. We found that older versions of the doc generator created a much larger file than the new ones. And the bisect is trying to identify which which commit did the damage. Okay. Is that what you were thinking? Did I miss something that you were suggesting? That that's it. I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, invite. So someone might want to. Okay, yeah, okay. Because like someone might try to like reproduce the error as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, is is that if they I make the good, very good. Thanks for the suggestion, Chris. Anything else on that one? No. All right. And next topic then was Google Summer of Code. Uh, Chris, do you want to give an overview? Yeah, so like for this year, for 2023, we got four projects selected. Um, and um, I think all four contributors are from India. So... Is that the at in the... Audio yeah, box. and so it's saying also we have um Dell projects, so maybe yours is like a GitLab modernization. Yeah, that's harsh. Think yeah, harsh. Right. Then then 
But we are not yeah, we're also, uh, darker. Yeah. Let's see, it was darker for, for better tutorial, better install, tutorials, etc. right? Yeah, I think it's, it, it has a like quick start in its name. It's oh, yes, Docker, Docker for quick start. That's right. Thank you. And here we can actually just read the blog, can't we? Yeah, we can. We can just go to the blog. So here's GitLab plugin modernization, building Jenkins.io, the one that you and I will be mentoring together. That, Chris yeah. is the lead. Great. And then let's see. So that was probes. Plugin health score probes. Yep. Anything else you wanted to note there, Chris? Um. Yeah, maybe we should talk a bit about size of project because at this time all four projects are medium, which means that they wouldn't they're not uh they would finish by the end of summer. And they wouldn't be well unless we have some exception circumstances, they would normally won't go over it. Yeah. Yeah, so as far as I understand it, all of the projects September. are medium, right? Planned to end by end yeah. of summer. Uh yep. So it's like around September. End of the uh, end of summer to around September again. Great. Thank you, Chris. Thanks very much. So the next okay. next top topic was on community feedback suggestions. So this was one we had discussed last week, and I've not seen any further comments. We had discussed it, and I included the notes in in the comment here about end users using the ratings and possibly consider accepting general text meg i know okay. this is one we involved you in the discussions quite deeply anything that you wanted to observe there no no it's all good. okay great so we we continue with that one then the documentation transition from Java 11 to Java 17 is in progress now. So Kevin's working on various parts and pieces. He's identified some places where that were that needed more than just a simple, oh, replace 11 with 17, like this page, for instance, where we've got a page, a section, a paragraph that talks about running Jenkins on Java 11 in Docker. But we have no paragraph that guides them to how to run with Java 17. The instructions are pretty easy. Oh, dear. Oh, yes. And it mentions it here. But what he's going to do is create a, a separate paragraph that is running with Java 17. Oops. So that that is the first thing that a user sees instead of reading how to run with Java 11. Okay. Good. Any any questions on the Java eleven to Java seven? Oh oh, and and I take it back. I do have one more exciting piece of news. June twenty twenty three is the scheduled release of Debian twelve. This is the one that was the catalyst for us to say let's remove, let's shift our install instructions to use Java 17 because this thing won't deliver Java 11. Okay. Wow. I got a question though. Yes. About yes. this. Like, uh, games, do we have like to switch over to 17 as well? Or not really? I'm sorry. So not... For what purpose do we have to switch over to Java 17? I missed one word in there, Chris. Oh, the plugins. Oh no, no, actually they don't. Good question. So okay. do plugins Yeah, because like some people it might be they want to ask. So your question is do plugins need to switch to require Java 17? Yep. Yep. Right? I should uh, phrase it. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's a really good question. The answer is no, but we strongly recommend that plugins test with both Java 11 and 17. Okay. And so in the tutorial, in the improve a plugin tutorial, we give them an example. So if we look, oops, wrong one. If we look at a, the improve a plugin tutorial, we tell them when you add your Jenkins file, test Java 11. In this case, the example is test Java 11 on Windows test Java 17 on Linux so that both get tested and you know that your plugin supports compilation and running its tests with both Java 11 and Java 17. Okay. Did that answer your question, Chris? Yep. And, and one of the things we've found there is that there are still some few plugins that don't support operation with Java 17 and need some additional improvements. So that one of the benefits of that step is the maintainer of the plugin will detect in their normal course of development, oh, I've got a Java 17 problem. I need to fix this. Yeah, me too. I do actually. That's a plugin with some issues with 17 because I um I think it was like some um some class is being deprecated. And no, mm -hmm. no longer support it in 17. I have to move it from one of the plugins I'm maintaining. Right. I done the one. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good point. Absolutely. Okay. Anything else on Java 11 to Java 17 documentation transition? Um, yeah. Is it, is it an active PR? Like, is anyone working on it currently? I for don't the think, I don't think he's open the first PR yet. Let's look and see. Oh, so, so it's like we're waiting. If, if okay. we look at Kevin's, whoops, if we look at his copy here, and let's go see if he's got an open PR right now. I haven't, I haven't looked to see if he's got any open P, oops, wrong one. This one. Okay, Martin's 27. No, he doesn't have any open pull request yet for it. He's been just been working through still on his local development environment. Okay. Okay. I see. Yep. Any other questions on the transition of documentation? Mm, is, um, I'm just wondering, is like, um, is there any other documentation sections we need to update besides the one we discussed so it's a possibility there might be something we um, just just double check yeah well, i think there are there are quite a number of places that can be updated and kevin's planning to to touch each of them but was your your thinking have somebody else help that or so Not these are the really these are the items that he's identified okay Okay. Yeah, it should be it should be like everything looks like. Okay. Is there anything in the docs about agents? Uh, agents and the Java version they use. Right, right. Because I, when I was there, with there were people who were confused that you couldn't run any agents from a version of Java that had been deprecated until you know to just to make sure there weren't any notes like that. Yeah, and there there are instructions in the documentation that say that the agent Java version must match the, the controller Java version. And that's part of this, for instance, the Java upgrade guidelines, where it says, hey, you must have the correct JVM version on the agents, and it must match the JVM version on the controller. Oh, okay. Ah, that has changed then. Okay. See how out of it I am? Well, and, and this was one where this was was a, a lot, there was a lot of noise about this during the Java 8 to Java 11 transition. As people said, oh, but I must have Java 8 out on my agents. No, no, you can't. You have to have Java 11 yeah. on agents if you've got a Java 11 controller. 
Okay. Did did that address your question, yes, Meg? Yes. Yes, I was completely out of it. So. Great. Okay. Any other topics on documentation transition from Java 11 to Java 17? Okay, so next topic is end of life notifications. We discussed this two or three meetings ago. There is now an open pull request. It's in draft state because we've realized, thanks to a good review from Tim Jacome, that the way it's structured right now isn't viable. It needs to be reworked. But the concept is good. Let's see if we can get the that pull request and we'll show you what the screenshot looks like oops it would help if i look at jenkins core instead of the docs <clears throat> okay so the U ui will look like this The example is for Red Hat, for Red Hat 7. Um, mm -hmm. A pop-up or a, a, a subsection of the page that says, hey, your operating system will no longer be supported by Jenkins after such and such a date. And please plan your upgrade so that you're off of this thing before we end support of it. And then a link to documentation that gives more details. Nice. And now this piece is the piece that highlights that it needs to be redone because what I did was I created a monitor for each operating system version. Tim correctly noted, really, the controller runs only one operating system. So we could just iterate over all the choices, find the one they are running and tell them about that one. We don't need to have Fedora 36 listed in this list if they're not running Fedora 36. Yeah. And Basil Crow noted, he thinks really the piece of this that I was asking about early end of life, his answer was, look, end of life is already, already happening and has in many cases happened for this operating system version because the system D based RPM installer no longer supports it. Ah. So... And then the, the container image is no longer maintained and hasn't been maintained for two and a half years. So people who are choosing to use that container image are using a badly outdated, undefended thing. Uh, then it's got ancient versions of some very important utilities. And so his argument was, look, let's just declare it. There isn't any real discussion needed. Yeah, good. Faster the better, eh? Right. And that's this. The idea is this thing will appear to the user, tell them your operating system is going to be end of life. You need to get off of that thing soon. And that's that's really all that I had for today. Any other topics? Oh, um, I might have like a like a question to discuss. It's kind of like um, uh, it's something random. Go like, ahead. I saw if you if you go to documentation, if you say like go to Jenkins Dio. So. So you want to go here? Yeah. So it's like if you go to Jenkins Dio, if you go to documentation. If you go to the user's guide, I think it's developer's guide, right? Okay. Yep, yeah, that one, yeah. So if you click on it, if you go, if you like, um, if you, we can see a lot of the pages with the like yellow triangle, the warning, but the one icon. Mm -hmm. So click on any one of them. So I'm just wondering is like, I, I have been contemplating like helping out, contributing by contributing, like by working through the, like one by one. 
these items to like add content to them. So do you think it's a is a good thing to do? It, it would be valuable to the community. I think so. I think it would be well, at least for me, I think it would be very valuable. Some of them, it may be as simple as declaring this thing is actually already well enough described. So for instance, the okay. internationalization section, as I look at this one, I'm not sure that there's much more to say other than possibly we add a section about crowd in. Other than that, oh yeah, okay. Other than that, it it describes how do you internationalize Java. How do you do it in Jelly? Okay. I'm not even sure we want to suggest to people use Groovy for views anymore. And so this one, I think, is already in quite good, quite good condition. And maybe a, a link to or a, the crowd in localization video embedded, and then we remove the work in progress indicator. Yes, that would be yeah. that would be deeply appreciated, Chris. Okay, cool. So I will like uh, start, I think uh, right around the time we start some of code. Great, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So, so reduce, uh, improving, resolving or improving the developer documentation so that we can remove the work in progress flags yep right and i think that's that's yeah that would be much appreciated um but i may need to get you involved though for like for some discussion about what to do mm -hmm. what not to add what to include because i, I don't have a, a very good sense of it yet I mean, your uh, contribution. And and I would be more than delighted to be involved. Okay, cool. So, uh, and to highlight one that is of interest to me, this testing one is one that I've been wanting to add to, and it's actually in quite quite a good bunch of contact content here. Some okay. of the things, yeah. So I at least for our Google Summer of Code student for the GitLab GitLab plugin modernization, this testing page is quite useful already. Showing them, hey, okay. here's how you can use the Jenkins test harness, and here's how you can use do pipeline tests, and here's how you can test. Now, what it doesn't have here is config. Oh no, it yeah, it does not have configuration as code tests, but it does have configuration round trip. So some of the some of the really cool kind of testing techniques that are in Jenkins already are described here. And so, and I think for our, our GSOC students, it may help our GSOC participants. Yeah. Or well, we can work with the GSOC students to add content to it while we're working it together. Mm-hmm. All right, any other topics for today's discussion? Nope. Nope. Okay. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to call us to an end today. I'm a little weary. And so <laughs> we're going to call it a good one. I'll, if, if you don't see me next week, it's because I was visiting CDCon in Vancouver, Canada. I'll be there Monday and Tuesday, back okay. in the office Wednesday, and we'll we'll see how things go from there. Terrific. Okay, cool. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Good week, everybody.